exciting night, you'll never find someone kind of pressuring you to make any sort of decision. That's just silly. It's, you can't force someone like that. And that's why uh, you can't force a family member or a friend to follow Jesus. It's something they've got to choose. So if you, you know, like if you had a cure for cancer, don't you think you'd be sharing good news? Or do you reckon you'd kind of bottle it up? My dad's got cancer, so I'm thinking you'd probably, I'd probably want you to tell me, you know, if you could cure cancer, I reckon that'd be cool. Same with this information about Jesus. It's worth sharing. If we want to share it, I reckon one of the best ways you can do it is just to say this. Hey, what do you reckon about Jesus? Just get people thinking about Jesus. Should we try that? Why don't you just turn to someone next year and go, hey, what do you reckon about Jesus? Give it a go. Hey, what do you reckon about Jesus? I think that's probably one of the best ways to get a conversation going with people. Hey, what do you think about Jesus? Just around this And you say, go, so, you know what? So, how about that Jesus? <laughs> I met Jesus on the bus once. If they say, he told me the meaning of life and gave me a pretzel. Where's that from? Uh, that's 70 show. And you think it was God or Jesus? If they say, you. You know what? I think he's kind of awesome. Or I'm not really quite sure. You can say, well, why don't we read Mark together? Just be wearing that all day. Mark is like this tiny little book in the New Testament. It's just the shortest account of Jesus' life. See, a lot of people will go, oh yeah, Jesus, oh yeah, he's an awesome teacher, and he's great. But not so many people have actually done some reading for themselves about the life and death and resurrection of Jesus. So you can just say, well, what do you reckon about Jesus? Why don't we read Mark together? Just, I challenge you this week, or for your holidays actually, you've got two weeks, just think of someone and just say, I'm going to ask them what they reckon about Jesus. Just see what happens. See what happens. Just do a little experiment. Maybe you can form a little group and meet at lunch. Some of us are doing this on Thursday lunch in the um, chaplain's room. Uh, and it's just cool. We're just reading Mark together. And I tell you what, there's some unreal stories in there. We're only up to like chapter one or chapter two. It's really cool. So let me just wrap this up. Jesus brings some information to you. I talked about the royal show and phlogiston and concerts and journeys. Jesus brings some information to the global scene. This is not just for Perth. This is not just for Canning Vale. This is not just for Kerry. This is information that Jesus brings to the global scene. And he says... There's a God. Shall I do the little things again? There's a God. Your life is designed to work with God. But what's happened? The relationship has gone. It's gone. And it, you're now hostile with God. But thanks to Jesus, he died on the cross and came back to life so that that relationship could be restored and you can actually get back to what was your life was meant to be like. So our call is to turn around, to stop being the king of the castle, to follow Jesus and to walk hand in hand with him as his disciple. This is information that will help you plan to live your life well, it'll help you not to waste your time and energy with things that aren't real. It will help you to avoid making the absolutely disastrous decision that has eternal consequences to live as though there is no God and will help you not to miss out on the greatest opportunity in your life of becoming a student of the most incredible person ever to live. This is Jesus' information. It's good news and I reckon we should share it. Cool. Why don't we just pray uh, and then we'll get ready to wrap up. If you could just bow your heads, if that will help, and uh, let's just have a moment of praying. Lord Jesus, I'm just so glad that I don't, you know, I'm not talking to a dead person. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you died and you came back to life. You're the one who conquered death. You're the one who conquered sin. You are the one who can bring us back to this relationship with God, which is how we are designed to work best with. 
Lord, for these young guys, I pray with all the different things that are going on in their heads and in their lives, Lord, I pray that you, by your Holy Spirit, would help them to think clearly about Jesus and to really weigh up and to make a decision about whether they want to follow you. I pray that you'll just help them with that. Give them clarity. Help them to find someone to talk to if they've got questions. And I just pray that this community will be a place of just spiritual vibrancy and joy where your kingdom is coming on earth as it is in heaven. Thanks, Lord. I reckon you're awesome and I love you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Invite these guys back up. Give them a clap. Let's have another round of applause for Joe.